he noted that when he first heard the shrieking sound, he thought it was a moose. The men looked around and saw a Bigfoot standing on the other side of the creek. What? Imagine. I would pee my pants. Yip, yip, let's go horse. Yip, yip, <laughs> get out of here. Let's, let's go. Well, maybe Taurus or <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Welcome to Forest Phenomenon, where we talk about mysterious, cryptic, and supernatural happenings in the American wilderness. I'm May. And I'm Carolina. And today we are joined with Stephanie to talk about one of America's most iconic cryptids. Yes, and happy Halloween, everyone. So we'll be talking about a cryptid with many names, such as the skunk ape, grassman, and sasquatch. But most importantly, everyone knows this creature as Bigfoot. So let's begin with some background information on this cryptid. Many indigenous people have their own legends of a Bigfoot-like animal, but the first sightings of Bigfoot as we know him in pop culture today began in October 1958, just outside of Eureka, California. It all began when columnist Andrew Genzoli published a column detailing a letter he had received from the wife of a road worker. The letter said there was a wild man that lived in the uninhabited area near Bluff Creek. The road workers also found large footprints in the dirt. Right, so the road workers claim to have found these large footprints that they guess belonged to this wild man. And one of the road workers, Jerry Crew, made a plaster cast of one of the footprints. The story spread across the US and pretty much solidified the modern image of Bigfoot. But in late 2002, the footprints were revealed to be a hoax. No! Of course. Created by <laughs> another road worker, of Ray course. Wallace. So after Wallace died, his kids actually came clean about how his father faked the footprints. Basically, they explained that he used a wooden 16-inch model of a human foot to stamp footprints into the dirt. It was all done to prank his coworkers. He was a prankster, but never malicious. This wasn't a well-planned plot or anything. It's weird because it was just a joke. But then it took on such a life of its own that even now, we can't stop it. I think if I had made a prank that gone viral, I would come clean because I am someone who I'm not really good with guilt. <laughs> oh, I would panic. I would fully oh, panic. Yeah. I would feel so anxious and so guilty. I think I would have to tell. Would you spill would you, or would, would you, you just let people believe? Would you spill or deal? Oh, That didn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, I probably would spill, but I don't know how soon I would spill. I think I would make it like a week before I told someone. Yeah, I would wait a couple of days. Um, I wouldn't go like Dear Van Hansen because oh like that's God, too much. It too far. So while these footprints have been debunked, we should probably take a look at some evidence that still has yet to be debunked. Ooh, I'm into it. Yeah. yeah. So Paul Freeman of Walla Walla, Washington took 14 inch long cast of Bigfoot footprints in the 1990s from the Blue Mountains. So this is what we have pictured here on the right with Jerry Crew's fake cast on the left. The image of the Blue Mountain cast was taken by photojournalist Colin Mulvaney. And what also makes the Blue Mountain uh, cast significant is the fact that it's been analyzed by Jeffrey Meldrum, an associate professor of anatomy and anthropology. Meldrum felt it would be hard to fake the running footsteps unless you had some device, some cable-loaded flexible toes. It's important to note that Meldrum is also an expert on foot morphology and the movement of monkeys, apes, and hominids. He's even edited a textbook on the evolution of bipedalism. So he would know how they would move, essentially. Yes. The Interesting expert of to, experts. The experts. The experts of experts. experts, yes. The main difference between these two images is that one, you can see elongated toes show motion. Yeah, especially if it's someone an associate professor of anatomy and anthropology. They obviously are very knowledgeable in yes. the fact of how the body moves, how how um, feet should look in particular. Right. Yeah, also the thought of if it was fake, the thought of the amount of effort and also 
just the rarity that it would be to find something with cable loaded toes. Like, right. how would you even make That's that? some go-go gadget shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I think like, <laughs> that is far, it's like way too far to be right. fake then. Yeah, yes. for sure. I, it's a really good point um, about the elongated toes right here in the picture mm -hmm. on the right, that like, that shows a foot in motion. Whereas the left one, Park the fake cartoon. one, it was really like a stamp. Not even any mo sort of movement of like, the foot kind of, I don't even know how to explain it, but just kind of going like this in a right. way, you know? So, I mean, I would have never even thought about that, yes. but that's why I'm not an associate professor of anthropology and anatomy. It's only, what, 14 inches, the real one, right? Right. Yeah, the and fake one's 16. I'm, just, I'm kind of thinking, like, is 14 inches that massive? Like, I don't know. I I know I've read things about, like, basketball players having, like, massive feet. Like, I know Shaq's feet are at least 14 inches. But what if Bigfoot has an actual small foot for his species? You know, oh, there's true. women. Like, no, yeah, it totally could be. I'm just saying, like, what if could it not have just been, like, a person running? Like, that doesn't yeah, look I see not like a human oh. footprint, really. Yeah. Especially when the fake was literally a model made from a human right. footprint. And that convinced people for a long time. So, I don't know. I'm not saying for sure. I just think, like, it is a possibility. 14 inches really isn't that big. Huh. Mm. That's but a it's also point. not, like, normal either. Like, when can mm. you find, like, when can you walk down the street and be like, you have 14 inch feet? Cool, let me put You're a cast big in there. Foot. Come on, let's yeah. go model my feet here at you my studio while ad, I make these big foot stamps. You put an ad in the newspaper, like, <laughs> looking for someone with abnormally sized like 14 feet. 14 inch. Feet. You would get some weird responses. You get some weird responses. Let's go to Craigslist. I mean, let's go to Craigslist. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Might be you have 14 inch feet? I need a foot model with 14 inch feet. Yeah. So now that we've looked at some possible physical evidence of Bigfoot, next we're going to be discussing the famous Patterson-Gimlin footage, which has been analyzed by many experts and hasn't been debunked yet. The two men who shot this footage rekindled their friendship in 1961 after losing touch for a few years. Their names are Roger Patterson, not to be confused with Robert Pattinson, and Bob Gimlin. Roger Patterson was an amateur Bigfoot hunter who was fascinated with Bigfoot, as an amateur Bigfoot hunter should be. And Bob Gimlin was a cowboy, and he actually met Patterson at a rodeo. Okay. How fun. I've never yeah. been to one, but maybe we'll meet... We'll, we'll meet some besties at a rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> um, in October 1967, Patterson asked Gimlin for a ride to Northern California where he claimed people had found Bigfoot footprints. They arrived on the 20th, which is exactly 54 years ago today, the day that we're shooting, October 20th. Wow. Uh, so but they discovered the tracks had been ruined by rain. They decided instead to ride horses deep into the woods. <laughs> Classic cowboy behavior. Classic cowboy <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, this is very cowboy, like Wild West. What they would find in the woods would not only amaze and mystify people for years to come, but change the course of their friendship. At some point during the ride, something spooked Patterson's horse. The men looked around and saw a Bigfoot standing on the other side of the creek. What? Imagine. I would pee my pants. Yeah. I'd run. <laughs> also that. Um, I'd be like, yip, yip, let's go, horse. Yip, yip, <laughs> get out of here. Let's, let's bounce. Go. Patterson took his camera out of his horse's saddlebag and ran towards the Bigfoot, filming it for just under a minute. It's actually really impressive that he got that much footage, honestly. I would be in so sh in such a state of shock. I'd be like, same. The, like I would not have the instinct to pull out my phone. Bro, this is silly. Like, okay, Horace, give me up the ruin. Let's I go. Yeah. Even a phone. It was like camera. It wasn't oh, just yeah. like an iPhone that you can just go, world star. Yeah, it was like an actual, actual camera. camera. It's like, let's get it out of the bag. Let's you know, take a lens cap off. Yeah. After the film was developed, the two men took very different stances on their experience. When I first saw the film, I thought, that ain't nothing. I said, I saw a lot more than that. So I was kind of the bad guy. The men sought out potential investors for the film. Gimlin had a lot of other obligations and just other things going on, and he just wasn't really into it anymore. Right. So. Yeah, he had more rodeos to attend. He couldn't be, he couldn't be stuck yeah. in this hubbub of big fun. Yeah, he just... He's like, I've seen some shit. Yeah, <laughs> he pretty much just decided to go home. He didn't like the unwanted attention, especially because it lasted years after the mm. footage. Oh, out. yeah. After his return home, Gimlin said that Patterson actually hired somebody to replace him and basically, like, be him, which is insane. That's just so weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, that's weird. I would be mad at my friend if they did that also. I would, yeah, too. That's really just, just a weird thing to do. For Gimlin, that was the last straw, and he actually didn't talk to Patterson again until he was 
dying. Patterson is on his deathbed asking for Gimlin. Which is like, how dramatic is that? Aww. Very dramatic. It's kind of cute though. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess it's like sweet, but also weird. But when he showed up, Patterson apologized to Gimlin finally, and the two were actually able to make up before he died. So I guess it was his dying wish to like have resolution Aww. in this friendship. That's nice though. That That's Bigfoot how... ruined. <laughs> he said, Bob, I've got the money and the means and the equipment. He said, as quick as I get well, you and I are going to go down to California and capture a Bigfoot. Well, that was in the afternoon, and he was dead the next morning. The video has never been proven to be a hoax, and it has been analyzed for years with scientific analysis. But even with this, some people still believe that it was just a man in a costume. Yeah. Boo. And to that I say, haters. <laughs> in the early 2000s, a man named Bob Hieronymus said that he was promised by Patterson $1,000 to put on a gorilla suit and be a part of the film. Patterson had already died by the time that this claim happened, but an attorney for Bob Gimlin did speak on it, saying that nobody was hired to be in the film. It's all up in the air, though. I just don't understand why he would need to hire someone to pretend to be Gimlin. Like, to me, there's nothing that makes sense in that statement. I like, think, why? I think maybe for, like, just to kind of get the attention, like, you know, make this more, like, like entice people. <laughs> well, no, but, I, like, to entice people. Like, okay, you know, you have this picture-perfect introduction of this film, and, like, you have this person who says they saw Bigfoot with you. So, yeah. and I oh, think... okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like you just hearing, like, oh, yeah, the other person that I saw him with actually doesn't care about it. That would kind of make me feel like it was yes. less legitimate. Like, if huh. he didn't even care about it and he was right there, like... Right. Uh, for someone who didn't really believe, who didn't really care much about the Bigfoot video, but felt compelled to address this whole gorilla suit situation, I think that speaks, that says a lot. Yeah. That, that, I think that's like, no, like, this is legit. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I feel, and also, like, him hiring a lawyer, I don't think necessarily is sus, because, I mean, it's been very clear, he doesn't really want to be a part of it. And yeah. I think it would be a lot easier to just, like, he has these people hired. I'm sure he hired them a while ago since he didn't like the attention in the first place. Yeah. Right. And this stuff kind of blew up. So I think it's not sus to do that. And especially if he, um, if people were being paid to be him, he obviously would lawyer up for like defamation yeah. situations. Yes, things like exactly. That. It is kind of sus that Gimlin didn't think more of it. Even if he wasn't as into it, I'm not that into Bigfoot. But if I saw Bigfoot, if I had a video of Bigfoot, I'd be all over it. Well, to add to that, maybe it was the men in black. The men in, you know, people believe that Bigfoot is associated with aliens, and people <gasps> who talk about aliens get shut up by the men in black. Not the nice, ah! not the nice men in black. The, you know, the weird, creepy men in black. So maybe he I was mean, scared out of it. Yeah. I just think maybe Gimlin just wanted to be on his horse in the rodeo. Like he didn't want this lifestyle of Bigfoot life. Yeah. He's yeah. like, he's just unbothered. So anyway. Bigfoot has been described as one of the most camera elusive beings of all time. However, others say that a lack of video evidence is not enough to prove that Bigfoot doesn't exist. And it wasn't until 1992 that the Saula, an animal similar to the cow, was discovered by scientists in Vietnam. There is a lot of deforestation, so as we're getting rid of people's homes, like the Sala probably didn't come out until the 90s because right. we just kind of ruined where they were living. Yeah. So they were, now that we've gone to those areas, they're just out and about like, what are y'all doing here? Like, this is my land. <laughs> yeah. Something else skeptics point out is that there's never been a Sasquatch skeleton or carcass found out in the wilderness. But to counter that, many say that it's also rare to find skeletons and bodies of grizzly bears. There's still a lot of people in the academic world who believe in the footage, such as Professor Meldrum, the person we mentioned earlier. Meldrum believes you can see Sasquatch muscle movements in the 1967 Patterson-Gimlin film. He thinks that the Sasquatch's ankles in the film could be a key indicator if it was actually a man in a costume. So now let's take a look at an enhanced version of the famous footage, um, which has been stabilized and cleaned up by M.K. Davis and edited by Mojo Pin 1983. Oh my god. <laughs> a lot of arm swaying. I know, the arm is very long. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like this. I go back and forth every single time I watch just it, walk. deciding if Oops. I think it's real or not. <laughs> okay, I do get but, that the arms really are longer yeah. than yes, they, they are. to be. But also, like, you could make a costume that is, yes. just has longer arms. Yeah, you can just extend the arms pretty easily, I feel like. 
I feel like in the 60s, they wouldn't be able to make a costume this good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I was gonna say that. That's definitely not a gorilla costume. Like, oh wait, you can, you can see the ankles. You can see them a little bit. I yeah, I think the the claim of it being a gorilla costume definitely like that's not that. Yeah. It wouldn't have been that good. It would have had to be like a custom made, mm -hmm. intentionally like a specialized supposed person. to be Bigfoot. Yeah. No, it's really interesting because I do see now after you've brought up the whole situation about this uh, this professor uh, talking about the ankle movements, I can definitely see that yes. it doesn't look weird. Like it looks like how someone should be walking. Yeah. No, it would give it away if it's a costume because when your foot is covered by a costume, like oh, I don't yeah, think you like would be able to see yeah, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. be able yes. to see the movement. I'm not sold either way. This has not been debunked by academics. No, yeah, it hasn't I know that it hasn't been debunked. That's why I'm saying I'm not proving either way. Like this is probably the closest that I've been to believing that oh, it's real. Oh, right, right, yeah, 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 same. But, I don't know, it's just kinda weird. I feel like something should have shown up. By I now. mean, mm -hmm. going back to your men in black point, like <laughs> what if people are setting up these cameras and people are just coming around and knocking them down and like no. The men in black will come out your door and be like, You're not showing Bigfoot to the world. I think I think the government hides things from us. Yeah. Oh yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've talked a lot about this piece of footage from 54 years ago, but what about modern day sightings? We've mentioned how elusive and camera shy Bigfoot is, but there have been a few inconclusive photos taken in recent years around the world. There's also been some audio recordings captured recently that have yet to be identified. Buckle up, because this is creepy, y'all. In late 2019, hunter Gino Mikas recorded a video of strange sounds coming from a forest in northwestern Ontario, Canada, which is almost the complete opposite coast where Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson allegedly recorded Bigfoot. Mikas is an experienced hunter who had been hunting all his life. He noted that when he first heard the shrieking sound, he thought it was a moose. However, the more he heard it, it became clear that it was nothing he'd ever heard before in the woods. Mikas recorded a video of the sounds and posted it on YouTube. People began speculating that the sounds could be coming from a Sasquatch or even a Wendigo, which is a mythological creature from the Algonquin culture, typically described as cannibalistic creatures of the woods. Some biologists have ideas on what it could be, but what makes this recording really creepy is that the source of the sound was ultimately impossible to identify. According to biologists at Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, it could be a wolf or a larger mammal, but identification was impossible due to the distance between the camera and the actual source of the sound. So let's take a listen to the recording, which has been extracted from the original video and cleaned up by Thinker Thunker. <laughs> Play one more time. I have no, yeah, like I, I no can't. Clue. I've never but, heard an animal make that. <laughs> to play devil advocate on myself, I don't go into the wilderness, so I don't even know what a distressed moose or wolf would sound like. Yeah, same. But this sounds like someone is in pain and it's, yes. oh man. Yeah, something big. It's also just like really a creepy, creepy audio yeah and especially yeah. if somebody who was like more of a professional said that they had never heard anything like that yes. someone who works with animals and like studies them and stuff right yeah. i trust that obviously more than my own opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah because even if you think about like a dog like even a big dog when it's in pain it usually when it howls, it's in a higher pitch yeah yes that's so true. so this has to be a huge animal to go into still such a low pitch of a voice and be Howling. Yeah, I also think like the amount that it clearly carried because I mean they couldn't even identify it because it was so far from the camera Like even listening to it, you can hear that it's far away and I think that like small animals don't usually make That like deep of sounds that would carry that far. Yeah, like right. lions their roar is heard from a far distance away I believe but obviously I don't think this is a lion, but it's still something to think about. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you for listening in with us and exploring this iconic Bigfoot evidence. And thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, there's definitely a lot of evidence of Bigfoot out there that's definitely worth discussing. The audio is what gets me all the time. It like freaks. I remember when it came out and it was like all over Reddit. I was like, ah, I can't listen. No, it's, it's out there. So creepy. The video does it for me, though. Yeah. Just being able to actually look at like if it is real. Right. Being able to actually just like think about that footage, just like, oh, that's literally just Bigfoot walking across. And I like 
even people have pointed out that like you never see grizzly bear bones, therefore you mm. can never really see Sasquatch bones, in my yeah. opinion. True. Something to think about. It's a possibility for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, thanks again for watching, you guys. And let us know in the comments if you've ever encountered any type of Bigfoot evidence like the ones that we talked about today. And remember, if you are going to go look out for Bigfoot, make sure to bring a friend, take precautions, and stay on the trail. Happy Halloween! Woo! Bigfoot's coming. <laughs> Bigfoot, our next Halloween costume. Yeah. We should all.